I think everybody just has to find their own way yes. that they use it. You know, I'm not saying don't go out and run your miles outside just because you want to run on a treadmill now. Find the best way for you to incorporate it into your life. But the investment that you make into yourself and into your health has benefits that you cannot put a dollar amount on. You can't put a time amount on. It's so crucial that we keep ourselves healthy, that we keep ourselves mentally prepared with everything going on and just that we take that time. So just put the time in, find what works for you and take it from there. However works for you. It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 250. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. You know, uh, before we get started, uh, we should probably uh, let people know one more time that we are going to be in Miami. We are. And uh, that will be on March 24th. We are there to uh, catch a cruise. Yeah, gonna, um, next Thursday. Get our money's worth out of these vaccines. And uh, so while we're getting in a day early, so you don't want to get delayed and miss a cruise ship they don't hold the boat for you no so um we would love to hang out with you if you're in the miami area so swing on by we're going to be at monty's coconut grove Mm -hmm. whatever that is we're tourists it had coconut in the title so we're like that must be florida sounds perfect to us yeah so uh if you want more information you can find that in the clip out group so swing on by there and uh search for events or coconut or something it'll it's pop uh up. it's pinned at the top so just okay. hit your going so we know to look for you absolutely so um so anyway uh i guess uh there's a shameless plug before the shameless plug so what pray tell do you have in store for people this week uh apparently refurbished bikes um there's uh there's lots about that there's new work arrangements happening at peloton so we got to talk about that uh we are going to talk about all the places that all the instructors have been and some of the uh workers for peloton okay john mills is joining us a little bit later and we will be talking some stock things yes uh and then dr jen visits how to get your energy back um we talk about chase tucker leaving um and uh we also have a visit from metpro angelo joins us to discuss factoring in fiber with your fitness goals and then of course all the things that you might have missed we do a little roundup for you awesome well before we get to all that shameless plugs don't forget we're available on apple podcast spotify google podcast wherever you get your podcast you can find us while you're there be sure and uh follow us so you never miss an episode maybe leave a review for the people that come along after you know we're worth checking out and you can find us on facebook if you would like to interact with us or other listeners throughout the week uh, facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there like the page join the group uh, sign up for the newsletter at theclipout.com where you'll get all the different articles we're about to uh, info dump on you uh, you can uh, you can find those links in the email we send out every week you can also watch these episodes at youtube.com slash the clip out. So uh, there's all that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Peloton in the news. So Peloton announced this week that they will be selling refurbished bikes. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, so this is interesting for several reasons. Um, by the way, I need to mention it does come with a one year warranty. OK, uh, it starts at one thousand dollars and f- well, one thousand forty five dollars. But what's forty five dollars between friends? Right. Uh, and it's two hundred and fifty dollar delivery fee f- and setup. Okay. Now, the important thing to note is it's available in select areas only only select areas and audiences whatever the hell that means that's a weird thing to say right like, right what does that mean i don't know i don't know uh sales are final other than apparently the warranty i posted about this that i was confused because when they talked about th- that all of a sudden they had the stock and people completely misunderstood it's like they can't read my mind which is weird yeah. right i mean maybe, people should just be able to read my mind maybe I mean, for the best 
Oh yeah, that's that's <laughs> that is definitely true. Um, he will be like, I, I clip out Crystal's not as nice as I thought she was. I thought Tom would have been the real, but it's apparently <laughs> there are there are days that's for sure true. Um, okay, but but the reason that I was confused about this whole thing is because God, it's been eighteen. It's been before the pandemic. It's right. been it's been when the bike plus first came out peloton said they alluded to on an earnings call that they were going to put into place a a um a refurbishment program right and they were going to use the bikes that they picked up because they had the trade-in program for the bike plus and then they said nope we don't have enough stock because you could sell them you on the open market for so, more. Yeah, you could sell them so easily on the secondary market that almost nobody was taking a, a, a veil of the trade-in opportunity. So then the question comes, where did these bikes come from? And 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 the thing is, is I think it is the bikes that people have upgraded since then uh, or turned in for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But I think that that means that it's no longer selling for as high prices on the on the right. the third party market, open market, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um. Because you, I mean, at the time, I sold my bike for as much as we bought it for, and instantly. Yeah. Like, like it was on Craigslist for about forty five minutes. Yeah. And done. And, and now you you can't. It's not the same. So I think that you know, they the secondary market Peloton kind of ruined it. But now they're finally getting the bikes in. So I was just un- confused as to why because we never heard about that. Like we didn't hear. Oh, this is the stockpile is piling up on the, all right. the earnings calls, all the things that have come up. This has never come up. I wonder if these aren't necessarily bikes that got traded in. I mean, I'm sure there are some. I wonder if they were bikes that people did the 30 day free trial and they were like, meh. Yeah. And so now they got those. I don't around. know. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of theories out there. And I, I mean, I do think that they all got turned in, but I don't know that we'll ever know why. Yeah. Maybe somebody will ask on the earnings call though. That'd be kind of interesting. Well, and I ultimately think it's probably for the best from from Peloton standpoint that the secondary market has calmed off, down, calmed down a little bit because, you know, they it makes more sense for them financially to s- sell a thousand dollar refurbished bike than for someone to sell a used used one. Oh, for sure. It's money in their pocket. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And then on the heels of that bombshell, we find out that Peloton is test marketing a subscription model for the bike is it just the bike or bike and tread uh no it was mm, it was just the bike it was just the bike sorry for the hesitation yeah yeah it was just the bike and they're they're testing out uh only in some stores there's only some stores doing this but um they're testing out between 60 and 100 dollars a month so i guess i'm still not clear like a person can send it back at any time so like after four months they can be like eh send it back i don't want it okay well what happens if you like do you just keep paying that fee forever like it's never yours like i don't what would be the point of that why would you do that yeah i mean it, you know like cell phones have switched to this model but there's kind of always a new, new model new cell phones and new technology and uh you know the the batteries get better and they have more features and the screens get stronger or the phones get smaller and then the phones get bigger and you know um yeah. and i just i i don't see I don't foresee them doing that with the fitness equipment. So, yeah, I feel like details are a little sketchy about what exactly this maps out to be long term for the consumer. And if you if you do stop paying on the bike once you hit the original fee for the bike, right? Right. Then then if that is true, then how is this any different than what they used to do? They used to do this back at the beginning. You you could pay for the subscription up front. I don't understand why they're acting. If that's all it is, then I don't know why they're acting like it's different because right. this used to be a thing. Yeah. I remember this. Totally. Um, but you got to keep the bike at the end. And this does not appear you get to keep the bike at the end. Like I... I am I'm I wish somebody from Peloton would be very clear about this because they're not. Yeah. So but I'm, and maybe that's also part of what they're trying to figure out with their test market. It could be like could will be. people just pay a hundred bucks keep paying on a bike that they could have theoretically owned outright. You know I mean for years you had all the rent to own stores. I mean they're still out there obviously but um, um, but that was kind of their business model right like you would rent to own this thing and you would end up paying way more than if you had just went and bought it. No doubt. And so but but your barrier to entry was much lower and the 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 price you pay literally and figuratively is that you would end up paying two or three times the value of the of the product by the time it was all said and done so um 
I don't know. Yeah. I'm not impressed. Uh, mm. I guess if they want to grow their market, then they got to they got to reach out to all different aspects, you know, true, this true. is a way to do that. Yep. So there was a uh, surprise message for some people last week. If you've done over 15,000 minutes of Pelotoning last year, last year. Yes. And you were part of the Peloton, the annual challenge. Like you had to like opt into that challenge. OK. And apparently you had to be in the United States. So. Yeah, there's some people that aren't too thrilled about that. Yeah. Now, I haven't actually verified that, but I have yet to see anybody outside of the United States get it. So a lot of people were complaining that they didn't get it. But maybe, maybe it's possible um, that there was just a longer wait time for people outside the U.S. And they just never went back on and posted about they were wrong. I don't know. But yeah. either way, you get or some they, kind of. When they were typing, was it with an accent? Um, that would be a good way to tell. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, never mind. They said they were outside the United States when they complained. What I'm saying is, ah. did they come back and did they get it, get the email and not and come never, back and say that yes. I got the email? But um, at any rate, uh, the uh, they're getting apparel of some kind because it says to show our appreciation, the apparel team would like to share something that they are proud of with you. Then they asked for your size in both a top and a bottom. But nobody's received it yet, so we can't report on what it was. Hmm. So we will see. Mm -hmm. That sounds. I, I I don't know. It's hard to hear that. Is like we got a lot of stuff in back. It it does. <laughs> let's, it does. Let's unload it. What's a good way to 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 prune the stuff? But how do you do that when you don't know what people like? That's. But I mean, I guess if it if it's free, you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Oh please, have I you know. met these people? I know, like. <laughs> Be sure and tune in on episode 251 of the clip out when we will be telling you about all the things people are complaining about having gotten for free. We'll tell you about the fits that were thrown. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, That's, Tom, did you forget about what the OPP yes. looks like? So here's the thing. When Peloton said they were they were wanting to democratize fitness that's not what they meant you've misinterpreted they meant how things fit yes you misinterpreted the word fit they did not they were not encouraging you to throw one so peloton is reopening its global offices and they're proffering some new work arrangements for people Yes, uh, they are opening back up on 425 and employees get a choice between two work arrangements. They can come in one through five days a week or they can work remotely full time. The other thing is they can work remotely for an extended period of time up to 30 days each year. So that's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then just just to give credit where it's due, that came from Lauren Thomas. She's always reporting on different business aspects. And this one was from her. So just wanted to make sure I give credit where it's due. Absolutely. Some good news. There's actually a lot of good news this week. There is, but I got to tell you, I'm confused. Okay. And we'll get into this more when we talk to John. Sure. Okay. But this is from uh, what Morgan Stanley mm -hmm. and they, you know, put out, a, I guess, some sort of valuation or analysis of, of Peloton. And they said that it remains the clear leader in the connected fitness industry. Yes, that is correct. So, yeah, that's really I'm confused. First of all, I agree. Peloton is the clear leader Absolutely. in connected fitness. There's no doubt about that. There never was any right. doubt about that. But like. Um, I don't know if anybody's been paying attention to the stock market, but it actually reached lower lows than the lows had been. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was like $21 a share the other day. Like, it's low, 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 low. Right. Like, real low. So it's low then? Like, like boots with the fur. Right. Low. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like the, like the guy from the Oak Ridge Boys <laughs> low. Yes. The Oom Papa Mau Mau yes. low. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, so, um... Yeah, so uh, like I said, we'll get into this more with John, but I just, I don't get why all of a sudden now they're nice. Like, I'm just like, did you guys talk to Peloton and you have like a reason for thinking this? What changed? That's what right. I'm saying. Like, Bear Bear changed? Is that what changed? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm so confused. There's also been uh, some new hires at Peloton uh, in the midst of all this. You get a new chief supply chain officer, and uh, I guess this is a new hire, but they got promoted to chief people officer yeah um we might have talked about andrew renich being the new chief supply and chain officer last week but i don't think we talked about sherry eaton getting promoted to chief people officer so just thought that was interesting news yeah 
more Foley news. Yeah, that's, some, <laughs> that's not good lately. It's not. I feel bad for him. Yeah, I, 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 this isn't awful. Or I, I mean, I'm sure it's not great, but it's also not unexpected. No, it, it's not. And and uh, yes, I know. I know. Just because I post something, people anyway. I'm yeah, not like just, it. yeah. If you just because you're posting less than positive news, you're not endorsing it. Like right. you're there to share Peloton news. So this particular story is Goldman Sachs is turning up the heat on Peloton founder John Foley because of personal loans backed by the the stock and it's basically he had borrowed money on the valuation of the stock when it was higher and it is not higher right anymore and they're like well the equity or the collateral you put up isn't worth as much isn't valued the same and so what are we gonna do about it we needs to talk yeah and so it's understandable they're having that discussion it's understandable that he's being he's kind of in the spotlight on this right and, and it's not unusual that that how he did his personal loans backed by their stock like that's totally typical people do it all the time right so what's it, it's just i think it's more just i feel bad for him as a person because he has so much focus on him right now and yeah. it's like it's just none of it's really good like and people keep making these little snarky Digs, comments yeah. like well he had all that money he did all this yeah. and, and it's like okay okay but but he was he made all that money <laughs> like it's not right. like he it's not like he made it up right <laughs> he didn't swindle anybody um so i get that people are frustrated with him too though i understand that they hold him responsible yeah. for all those people losing their jobs and that is fair like that's fair right it's it's just I feel sorry for those people too. Like it's just Absolutely. a shitty situation yeah. all the way around. And you know, I had something similar like this happen to me when with my Beanie Baby collection. Did so, you? Yeah. So they were valued very high and mm-hmm. took out a lot of loans against yeah. my Beanie Babies and my Pogs. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. then of course the market collapsed, and now I'm all I'm left with is uh, trash bags full of Hummels and Beanie Babies. What you gonna do? Yeah. That's. I, I feel you, Foley. You're gonna have to get some Yadro and perk <laughs> that up. Here's another one that's good news. Peloton Lane Break. This was from uh, PC Mag. Test writing the addictive fitness game. And they say in here that Lane Break workouts on the Peloton bike are so much fun. You might ghost your favorite instructor for them. Sorry, Cody Rigsby. You have been. I have. Like, I I don't even feel sorry about it. You know, like it's gotten kind of stale and old. And I'm so freaking tired of the people who keep high fiving me no matter how many times <laughs> I complain and Peloton won't do anything about it. Yes. So it is so nice to go over here and play this game and just have fun right and i don't have like i love high fives from normal people right. i don't like it from stalkers and um it's it's fun like yeah. i don't have to i don't have any of that stress and it's really nice and it puts a whole new fresh perspective and i have no interest in going back to a class anytime soon so. and this is not the first article we've seen like this people Mm-mm. talking about how fun lane break is so it seems to be unanimously well received it, which yeah is nice. it is yeah I've, I've only heard a few people say they don't like it and some people don't like how intense it is or some people don't like that it's it's not like a true Tabata. They don't have like a 2010 uh, whenever they say Tabata. So there's there's little things that they could do to make people happy. But yeah. I was super stoked. They dropped some more classes on Friday and I hit them over the weekend. How about that? I've heard Lane Break is so popular. It's rumored uh, that it's going to be a contestant on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> so look for that. Oh, poor Cody. So uh, Dara was at South by Southwest. Yeah, and it might be Dara. We it don't might know. be Dara. We've never mm-hmm. talked to her. Yeah, but uh, yeah, she was there, and um, she she was repping one Peloton, and she was hanging out, and she was all in Peloton apparel. She talked to uh, Jay Kramer, who's the chief marketing and comms officer of Accenture. So that's pretty cool that she yeah. got to do that. That's absolutely. Fun. And you know, speaking of South by Southwest, people might remember we were on the Matt F. Basler podcast that we shared. Yeah. It was a very odd experience. And no one had any idea why we were sharing that podcast to yes. this day. We, nobody gets it. No. But and it, it, I, I get that they don't get it. It's but confusing. his band was at South by Southwest I this year. I saw that. So good for Matt Basler. Good for Matt Basler. That's awesome. His band is actually really good. They are really good. I've used them at the arena. I had them open for Culture Club a few years back. That was... They're, that's the one that they did the Beastie Boys, right? No, no, no. That's this, another band he's oh. in. This is a this band will plug for them is called Middle Class Fashion. Okay, and they're they're really good. Okay, well then I don't know how good they are. <laughs> I never saw that one. <laughs> but the Beastie Boys, he's also in a Beastie Boys tribute band, which was smoking. Yeah, it was. 
And then finally, for this segment, we have a couple articles from Inside Higher Ed, and they were sent in to us by... Barbara Lom. Ah. Thank you, Barbara. Yes, thank you very much, because I promise you, we would not see this publication. No, so, we don't We don't peruse a lot of the higher education links. Correct. Um, but th- so she has, in all her time that she's been Pelotoning, she's seen exactly one Peloton article uh, in the higher education information. This week, there were two, <laughs> both of which highlighted how wonderful the quality of instruction is in the peloton world isn't that interesting that's very interesting yeah one's about uh talking about how ranking can become demotivating for Mm -hmm. people which is true for many people and the other one is uh just different uh lessons you can learn from from peloton yep and how they handle their classes and whatnot so i think that is fascinating and thank you for sending those to us absolutely If you're looking to up your strength training game, might we suggest a tonal? It is the smartest home gym and personal trainer that adapts to you for real-time results to help you get stronger faster. It gets to know you better with every single rep, and that makes it the most personalized personal trainer. Tonal strength assessment intelligently determines what you're capable of setting the optimal weight for you and taking the guesswork out of strength training. Tonal uses 17 sensors to provide real-time form feedback to ensure the perfect form with every movement so you get the most out of each workout. Forget plates and dumbbells. Tonal's revolutionary digital weight system replaces an entire traditional gym in one compact design. And it's an entire gym on the wall with thousands of live and on-demand classes led by expert coaches to keep you motivated. No matter what your experience level, Tonal has thousands of personalized workouts from strength training to hit. No more being scared of that part of the gym, right? So you can try Tonal in your home for 30 days. Tonal is so confident you'll love it. They offer a full money back guarantee. And you can now get Tonal from $63 a month and 0% interest over 48 months. Visit Tonal.com and for a limited time, get $100 off when you use promo code the clip out at checkout. That's T-O-N-A-L dot com promo code the clip out. Tonal, be your strongest. Run, lift and live with John Mills. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube, it's John Mills. Hey, John, how's it going? How's it going? There's that energy. What's going on? (laughs) So I guess I feel like today is all about stocks with you, uh, our discussion with you. So I I am so confused about what is happening this week. Like, okay, the stock goes down and yet it's the nicest things that people have said ever. What? Yeah. What are we doing? What is happening? Can you make sense of this? Well, I mean... I think that um, what has been happening has been a little odd to date. I mean, I think it it feel it felt like this for a lot of us that, you know, yeah, Peloton made a lot of mistakes and they were poorly forecasting. And, um, you know, there were issues with previous products having to be recalled and all that stuff. We know about all that stuff. And that's enough for the market to panic and things all kind of go to shit so we (laughs) so right like so that makes sense but their ipo was 29 bucks and we're down to 21 so it's so the question is is this and and at this point they've got four times more subscribers than they did at ipo so then the question becomes did everybody just freak out too right. Much. I mean, that's all. That's right. always what I've said. Right. So, but right. but like, it's it's like when you get your wife a blender for Christmas, <laughs> and you're like, that was a mistake. But you didn't do that, did you? No. <laughs> oh hell no. Oh, like, oh, that, oh, but oh. Where, you're, where you're like, okay, I, that I, mistakes were made, but it's I, not like I was sleeping with a stripper. You right? have to keep it in perspective. <laughs> yeah, you have to keep it in perspective. But like. But like, why all of a sudden is the stock market being rational? I mean, I guess I just don't understand. Well, the market's not. It's the analysts that seem to like the analysts Same are different. Well, no, because it's not showing in the price point yet. But they every time the analysts start coverage or they start to speak, you notice that the market kind of listens. It's like they're waiting, like yeah. for this analyst. Yeah, it, they actually listen. Like I don't get that. Thank you. Yeah. Like it's almost like they have a little too much power for me. 
But sure. but um, so, yeah, that's what happened here. Like all of a sudden Bernstein Financial Services, they had an analyst that kind of spoke. Right. And said, you know what? We're initiating coverage on Peloton because this twenty one dollars is ridiculous. We think that, you know, they're at least at forty dollars stock and the way things are priced, it's priced as if they're going to, you know, three quarters of their um, average uh, hardware sales are going to just vanish and they're going to never get, gain another subscriber ever again. That's how the, it's priced based on how I don't right. know how they formulate those numbers. So not but knowing anything about that, this, here's the first thing question I have when I see the 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 Bernstein article. Yeah. Should you get stock advice from a family of cartoon bears? Is that <laughs> is that appropriate? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say no. Okay, <laughs> maybe that's why it's not reflected in the price. Mm. Like mm. they they might be waiting for like Arthur to chime in, <laughs> right? That's what that's what's, what it is. What's Caillou think about all this now that Peloton is in Canada? Like these these could be things that the stock market is thinking collectively. You you might be right because right. I don't know. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I think but, that was yeah, a good all, a good assessment, though. I do. I think you had yeah, some really good things to say. Well, all of a sudden, you know, they're you know, it's just kind of. A, I think it's just rational. They're talking rational. The analysts yeah. are just kind of. It just sounds like something clicked, or one day they said, "This is the day we plan for." Okay, go say what's rational. Like, <laughs> I, don't know. I just picture these people all in a room, and they're like. They'll go and have a conversation with Barry and they're like, now I feel better about it. That's what I feel like is happening. Am I, am, do I have well, too many conspiracy what, theories? Is that what's happening? I, well, well, I was watching this Bernstein analyst on CNBC yesterday and they immediately asked. Was it Papa asked Bear? This, <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. And, and the analyst, they asked the analyst, so you just, you're just happy about Uncle Barry, right? You guys, and, you, know, you guys, what, what, Bernstein. What? Bears, Bear Bear, Barry. I'm telling <laughs> the you, relationship is all making sense now. Sorry, it's John. All I starting to click. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm yeah. seeing this in a whole new light now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> carry on. <laughs> so the announcer's like, "You, you, are, you're just happy about the direction in this new CEO, right?" And they're like, no, it has nothing to do with the CEO. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's just we're just looking at the numbers and the numbers say um, the way it's priced is ridiculous. I mean, basically. I mean, yeah, like, but I could have told you that a long time ago. So I. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, we don't know. We don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> Let's see what happens next week. Um, I'm sure we'll be surprised again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was a Confused Forbes there. article or does this just kind of retread what we were just saying? It's like they're just making the the rounds, right? So Bernstein's and Bernstein Financial Services initiate initiates coverage, and they have their talking point, and then Forbes initiate uh, comes out with this article, and the writer basically says the same things that the Bernstein analyst said. That basically, in a nutshell, they're saying the same thing. Um, it they got four times more subscribers than they did at the start of IPO, yet the stock price is $8 less. Um, their their revenue is like a billion, it was 1.1 billion last quarter, and it's expected to be another billion this quarter. And uh, it, yet we're pricing this in at two times uh, full year revenue and doesn't doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't. Like, it just makes it doesn't. the same exact stuff. Yeah. It's, and, oh. and we were saying the whole thing during the collapse. We were like, they have more people than ever. People aren't throwing away right. their bikes. Like Y'all what? are freaking right. out over nothing. Yeah. Like they still right. have Both their of, in customer base. Like that's ultimately what matters. Right. Both of these things, the Bern, Bernstein and, and Forbes are, are going. And they've got this ridiculously unheard of churn rate. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, right. It's just crazy. Anybody would love to have that. Right. right. And so the stock price doesn't make sense. Both of what's, what's interesting to me, though, is like, so Bernstein's like uh, targeting them at $40 a share. Uh, Forbes is saying 50, both of which are much, much lower than those crazy heights. Sure. But OK, that's that makes sense. They come back down to normal. They're just saying. Where they're at now doesn't make it. Sense. Yeah, 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 and I, I actually would agree with that because if you figure the hundred and fifty never didn't make sense. No, sense. yeah, no, but twenty one doesn't either. No, so right. yeah, yeah. Well, That's okay. So apparently, it's just that 
the stock analysts have finally gained some common rational sense. Okay. They were at some conference or something. They were, they at, all they were at the analyst conference. And they're like, maybe uh, March 15th, we say it. Yeah, we good? I wonder so if March it, 15th. I wonder if it took place in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> there was some honey involved. Right? And, you know, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> there was some new features added to Apple Fitness Plus. Mm. Yeah, this is interesting. I got all confused with this one, but. I, I was relating it to the Apple Watch OS, but I don't think it is. I th- simply what the, the article was really was about was the fact that Apple Fitness Plus is going to be adding um, like audio commentary around exercises that are occurring on the screen is what it sounds mm-hmm. like. So it's for it's supposedly supposed to be for like visually impaired people. So like if they're uh, going into like some type of uh, form of an ex- exercise and they can't really you know, see it, then the commentary will kick in and tell them exactly what's happening on screen. I think so, that's a I good mean, ad. Yeah. I think mean, it's a very good ad. Yeah. I thought it was a cool thing. My question in the post was, Apple Fitness Plus seems to keep adding like these little things. And they then do. when I see them, I go, that's kind of cool, but it's not, it's not earth shattering. I was the last thing. Yeah. It's like little after tweaks. After a while, they start to like add up. Teeny things. They start to add up. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going. I'm thinking back. I'm going. How many of them little things? How much is that worth now? Like all these little tweaks. Like, are, and so my question in the post was like, are they like creeping up on everybody and nobody's paying any attention? They're like, la 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 la. la. Apple Fitness Plus. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that happening? I mean, probably to some degree, but I still think like they don't have, I mean, name an instructor. Well, I, I, I mean, I hear from people, I, you know, I'm, I'm coaching on MetPro and I, I talk to a very wide variety of people every day who do all kinds of different workouts. Mm -hmm. And, um, I hear from people who've tried lots of different stuff and I hear people not, not satisfied with Apple fitness, um, that it's just not as engaging. It's not as exciting as the Peloton content. And so, so while they might be adding features, there's something still missing from an engagement standpoint. And, and to your point, Tom, no one knows who the instructors are. So yeah. I, I and I know people like to talk about how many like, oh, but they have so many more subscribers, but because it's like bundled in with something and it's just there. Right. It's the same way like my cable company, you know, our cable company gave us a landline, but we never plugged it in. But technically right. they sold us a landline. <laughs> right. You know, that's true. It actually costs less for us to have it. But yeah, right. we were like, no, don't right. we don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> But we right. got it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't yeah, know. It's I, it's. I, I think it's fair questions, though, John. I think they're good questions. I hear the exact same thing. Like I had, like uh, I can relate. But I had a, a person in my group that was like very fanatical when it first came out because it it seems like there were some in- pieces to it that sounded like they could be a little different, that might be a little innovative, but then have since you know I don't hear much. And then when I do hear about it, it's kind of like yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Like as if they're not really fond of the content. Or right. Something. So I, I get the same same kind of feedback. It's it's functional. Um, it's just not exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's missing that piece. Yeah. Like I that, don't that piece, that sticky piece that gets you coming back to go another class. And I don't feel like I see any something. passion for it. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Like right. there, it's probably it probably has a lot of people that it saves them from spending extra money to get a Peloton subscription because they're like, well, I got this and it's fine. Like, I, you know what I mean? Right. But I don't hear anybody like, you know, there's not an Apple fitness apparel store. That's fair. Right. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to John's point, so I, I don't, they might be sneaking out. <laughs> <up. laughs> they're just like, they just they just keep dropping these little teeny things. They just all of a sudden drop a little tiny thing. Like, and I keep thinking, are they serious? Are they more serious than I thought? They're just very patient. Like, I don't think it's that. I, personally, I don't think it's that focused. Yeah. I think it's like yeah. they keep adding. They want to keep adding value for people and they keep adding because that's just yeah. what Apple does. But right. I don't think right. I think it's just something else to show that they have to have a one stop shop for people. But I don't think that right. it's ever like gonna replace peloton <laughs> yeah i don't think so either but it, you know as if you view it as a war of attrition like you could see i you know i could see a situation where i mean no pun intended for the analogy i'm about to make but like okay they add this feature that we just discussed and okay if if you're if you're visually impaired you're instantly going to be like well then well, 
no reason to get Peloton because I, it doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. I, so like you right. basically have scooped up that entire that entire community. I mean, I don't know how large it is, right. but but you're probably going to corner that market and until Peloton right. decides to address it. One thing Apple is very good at is making things work well together and very easily, and you don't have to think about it. So that's where they win. Like if you're a person who's not a fanatic about exercising and you never got into Peloton and you you were just like eh, I don't really get what the craze is about and now you want to try a spin class why wouldn't you just try apple fitness if you have everything else like it's going to be cheaper it's right there it's yeah it's that's i feel like that's the that's the war they'll win and i feel like that's what you're saying tom yeah that it's just it's the barrier to entry for a lot of people is very low because it's already there yeah right so right so same old same old i guess i mean peloton's content is just i mean just second to none and, you know, I mean, I get to the lines to this story and the previous. It's like that still kind of holds everyone's attention. I'm sure I'm confident that's why their churn is so low. Absolutely. And as things occur, that just stays consistent, which is, you know, I think why they can continually stay the leader. I guess the takeaway here is Apple Fitness is like closing time at a bar. You look around and you're like, well, I guess you'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a nice. You sum- see me summer. anticipating the, like the punchline. I know you were I like, "Where are we going? Beforehand. Where are we going?" Like <laughs> you, you saw the joke from Jump, so I was just laughing, just waiting for the punchline. You don't even know, but you know you're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> this week's episode was brought to you by Semisonic. Once again, on the road with. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this with all the fa- time at our house. Road, on the road with fastball. <laughs> you never and the know. Gin blossoms. You never know what you're going to get here, John. <laughs> you never know what, where, where it's going to come in from. You yeah. Don't. You That's just, cool. Though. You That's fun though. Well, <laughs> it is. It's an exciting. It is. <laughs> well, thank you, John, for joining us. Until next week, where can people find you? They can find me in my Facebook page or group Run Lift and Live. They can find me on Instagram Run Lift and Live. They can find me on the tickety talk run lift and live, or they can find me at runliftandlive.com. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, John. See you guys later. Bye. Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. She also has a wonderful app called No More Diets, which you should check out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dr. Jen. Hi. Hello. Hello. Well, I am so glad you're back. We have uh, a question for you from our listener, Lynn K. She's been taking all the usual classes, but her energy is low. She keeps telling herself as long as she's moving, it's all good, but she's still not happy about it and the snow outside not helping. So what can we do for Lynn? Okay. Well, Lynn, first of all, I want for you to rule out anything physical. So I want for you to go to your doctor. I want for you to make sure to uh, have them look for any vitamin deficiencies, vitamin D. Also check your hormones, make sure that you don't have any kind of virus, all that sort of stuff. So once we have ruled out the physical, then you also want to look at, is this a sudden change? Is this a gradual change? Um, Could this be a sign of depression? Could this be a sign of sleep issues? Could you have sleep apnea? If you have a partner who is also in your bed, I would ask, am I snoring at night? Am I waking up at night without even knowing? Because sometimes people are have sleep apnea and they wake up and don't even realize it because of the stage of sleep that they're in when that happens. So I would really want to look at ruling out those things. But if it's not depression, vitamin deficiency, hormones, virus, sleep apnea, all that sort of stuff, then what I want to do is to kind of get you excited about exercise again. And I do think that your um, thinking of, hey, if I'm moving, it's good is great. I love that. And I think that it is really important. There are sometimes when we just go through a phase in our exercise life where it's like, you know what? I just got to be happy with that. I am getting on the tread or getting on the bike and I'm, and, and I am moving and I'm getting that good heart health and getting all these benefits. But then there are other times where that is a call to, you know what? It's time to shake things up. 
It's time to try something different. It's time to try a boxing class. It's time to try a dance class or to try a different instructor that I haven't tried before, or maybe do a search based on music instead of doing the same, you know, power zone class or, you know, hit class where it's just kind of more about like the cardio and the specifics where it's like, you know, what, I'm just going to have fun. So I, I think that it's it's a really good time to reevaluate what your plan is and where you can try something new and shake it up and get excited again. Oh, yeah, I love that. That's really great. And there's so many there's so many things you can do on Peloton to look that up. Like yeah. you gave a lot of really and, good and examples. Now with this new um, like video game on the bike. Yeah, lane break. Yeah. I was really digging that. Oh my gosh, it's so fun, Doctor Jen. Have you tried it? I have it. I really need to. It is so fun. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna need to try it for for sure. And also, a lot of people don't even realize that so many of the scenic runs and rides have been completely revamped. So it's a, a whole different experience. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I I struggle with all of that, right? <laughs> Like I still don't enjoy. Oh yeah, any totally. Of it, so, but your your energy hasn't changed drastically. It's just you just don't enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like time you really enjoy the results, being healthier, being more fit. Like I, it seems like you really enjoyed that. I I have, and that makes it easier to do seeing tangible results it was like the the first you know year uh, <laughs> was a lot harder because it like it, and honestly like I, I was seeing results sooner than that I just my head wouldn't let me see that I was you know yeah. and so it was a while before it really clicked for me that I'm like oh I, I do look different so and I think that, that that's a really great point especially for people who are making changes that are as dramatic as yours and this is a significant health issue that sometimes you get focused on that sort of like what does it look like and what are the end results and that can kind of burn you out and and you know not be great for your energy as opposed to again you hear me say a million times the process over the outcome like hey i was able to get seven check marks this week or i was able to you know walk for longer this week than I did for last week, you know, any kind of improvements, let that inspire you and excite you. Yeah, I know you were talking, uh, I think it was two episodes ago about uh, finding your why. And so yeah. like mine for a long time and not that I was exercising, but I was trying to keep my weight under control. And like mine was like, well, if I have a heart attack, like where do my kids go? You know, because yep. it can't go yeah. to the other half of the equation. That would be a shit show mm -hmm. and so like that was my and, and then i did find myself as as my youngest got closer and closer to 18 it was harder to stay focused and so <laughs> I, I had to come I, up with something I, different <laughs> I, I can understand that but i think it's great that you did somehow you managed to stay inspired and continue to enough to get the job done and make such a great difference in your health well, thank you. I was not trying to commandeer the topic. I was just trying to commiserate. I'm proud of you too, though, Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's you. great. It's really yeah. impressive. It well, is. <laughs> thank you so much for, for joining us. And again, I was not trying to hijack that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> poor Lynn. I know. Poor Lynn. <laughs> Lynn's like, God dang it. Like, that was... <laughs> she got her question answered. She did. She yeah. did. So, uh, but until next time, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me um, at InStyle Magazine, I have a weekly column called Hump Day with Dr. Jen. And on all social media, especially Instagram and Insta Stories, I post all of my Peloton workouts at Dr. Jen Man, two ends on Jen, two ends on man. Thank you. Instructors in the news. So it was announced last week, shortly after we recorded the episode, that Chase Tucker is leaving Peloton. Yeah, he he uh, said that it's time for him to go do something else that 
Uh, he really wants to, at first when he was at Peloton, he woke up every day inspired to push himself and that has pushed him on to new things. So a career in country music. <laughs> no, no, surprisingly, oh, no, no. Um, and I don't know if what you have after this, but at some point somebody posted about that he had been um, on live. I think it was an image I sent you. Yeah, I I can just talk about okay, it. You yeah. don't have to share it. Sorry. Um, but uh, basically, he went on live the next day after he made this announcement, and he talked about that he is going into a career in tech. And um, I guess he is really excited about it and looking for an assistant either in New York or in Nashville. So uh, if you... I don't know if he's still looking because it was five days ago and sure. there's a million people wanting to support him. One would think. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if it's still open, but if it is, reach out to him. You never know yeah. if you're looking. Absolutely. But. I also think it's interesting because, you know, we had uh, for fun, we had a Peloton tarot reading yeah. on our last episode yeah. of 2021. And one of the predictions was peloton pregnancies which happened a few weeks back. The, yeah. The first of Anna Greenberg. Anna Greenberg. First of what the, they predict will be many right mm-hmm. and uh and one of the other things was instructors leaving and not just leaving but leaving for new career fields yeah and, and you know i gotta say that's an interesting note now i i am a self-proclaimed skeptic on same, these matters so I, I have to be very clear about that but i will say what really intrigued me about that was that every instructor who has left thus far has continued in fitness i mean right. i see them all the time and Tra- chase tucker is the first one that didn't so the fact that she not only said he's leaving but he's going in a whole different direction that is notable and very fascinating so thank you erica mclean i, I am real curious to see what else is ha- going to happen yeah this year. I could girl, because <laughs> of the pregnancy thing was like like okay but just demographically with age demos you can kind of it's and the, all the marriages and all the marriages happening like it's not crazy to think that you're going to start seeing in- instructors that are pregnant like that's that that wasn't you know the 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 boldest choice but but this one was pretty bold, especially and so specific. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what else is going to happen. And while we're talking about Chase Tucker, we should probably talk about a website called Connect the Watts. Kind of floated an interesting theory about the class rating system and could that have led to his departure? They did. Yeah. And so they had kind of a list. They said, you know, class ratings may indicate why. And then they had a list at the bottom of where all the instructors kind of weighed in. So if you go for strength classes, now this is strength classes only on the tread. So they looked at the strength coaches by percentage of classes rated 98% or higher. And then, so you had Jess Sims, 98, Rad Lopez, 90, Adrian Williams, 88%, Callie Gulickson, 88%, Maddie Majacomo, 82%, Andy Spears, 63, and Chase Tucker, 51. Um, so it's it's interesting because they say that Chase had a much lower class satisfaction than anyone else that he found. Um, now, it, to this person's point that so you know Barry McCarthy Bear Bear came out with a very strong statement that he said we're not a family we're a team right and you need to go to the end zone and if you fumble the ball you're out and so I feel like that's where this article is coming from they're saying is this why because he didn't get a strong score so are we are we now facing a peloton future where everyone is going to have like those 360 reviews and everything you do is going to be looked at very carefully and that's a very very cfo kind of viewpoint and he is a past cfo so i would not be surprised and i mean you know peloton's always been a very data-driven company and so it's not a crazy place to land from a theory standpoint and i'll also say like okay when we started this show there was like what 12 instructors Mm -hmm. and now there's 319 (laughs) there's there's 54 well with chase leaving now there's 53 right so Will somebody else replace him? But that's another right. story. But like, I, I kind of feel like maybe they won't. I think they, they have so many instructors. Is that's it, what I think, too. Is it really worth bringing in somebody else? Well, that'll be interesting, too, right? Because we thought all the instructors were kind of safe from the layoffs. But right. now with this theory, you got to wonder. But then it's like if they don't replace Chase, to me, that does say this was based on something more than just Chase wanted to leave and go get a new career. Um, I, I don't I don't know. And and I hate talking about this because there's going to be some people that are going to be really mad at me for right. ever even assuming that he didn't just quit on his own, that this was kind of pushed 
upon him. And it could be a little it, bit of column A and a little bit of column B. It totally could. You know, it. So I, you know, and a lot of times companies, that's you know, that's their way. Uh, they when they let people when people leave, they just don't replace them, and that rather they, so they don't necessarily deliberately let them go. But when somebody leaves, they're just like, well, somebody else can pick up the slack. And with fifty three instructors. That's a lot of people to pick up slack. There I, is. I, so, I, I mean, I I can't really think of a reason you would run right out and replace them, especially at the moment. With that's where that's the kind of what at. I think, too. But I think it, sen- it sends a strong signal if they don't. So, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, we'll see. Shape magazine, Michelle K. Yeah, yeah, she's back. She's back a couple times this week. Yeah. Uh, has an article about uh, Cody Rigsby and why he takes two rest days a week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, rest and recovery. And uh, so you can read all about it. But uh, another great article from Michelle K. And then uh, we should point out real quick that Robin Arzan was on the Second Life podcast. Mm-hmm. Yes, she was. Uh, and so she talks about, you know, she's they're talking about that she's been an ultra marathoner, she's a Peloton instructor, and she's a best selling author. So that you kind of you're hitting a lot of different topics in right. this particular uh, podcast. So uh, it's 47 minutes. Be a good one to listen to if you're looking for some Robin time. So it wasn't very long ago that we announced that Olivia was a uh, going to be a ambassador for Puma. And right now, Didi, a Didi Shaw is. How about that? Yeah. I don't always keep track of who's who in the world of Peloton, in case people haven't noticed. Yeah. But she's just yoga, right? She is just yoga and meditation. Okay, sorry. So, but yes, yes. So that, I just find that interesting. Have we seen that yet? No. The, uh, you, I know that there's there are sponsorships out there, but I don't know. I don't know of anything at this level. Yeah. Well, hat tip to her. Mm-hmm. A Puma hat. Or if you prefer, Puma. <laughs> Congrats to Aditi. Okay, so this was just a fun post. Um, And if you're listening and not watching, I'm going to try to describe it quickly. But Bradley Rose is in between two walls at the top of it, acting like Spider-Man. So you kind of have to see it. But um, he does a little song, Spider Brad, Spider Brad. And then he says, here's a crazy factoid. He auditioned for the role of Harry Osborn in Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. And Dane DeHaan was the lucky one who got the role back in the day. Uh, And so I just thought that was a little fun little fact. And I wanted to make sure everybody heard that. It's pretty cool. And while we're discussing Bradley Rose. Mm, guess the other Michelle K article. Uh, is he, I was like, wait, there are two Michelle K's? <laughs> other article there by Michelle K. Yeah, uh, Bradley Rose almost quit fitness for good until he joined Peloton. And if you haven't heard the story, this goes through how he recovered from a stroke in his 30s and just a few years later became a Peloton star instructor. So pretty cool. Speaking of instructors, there's been so much this week. Kendall Tool, uh, she announced this week that she is going to be repping Spiritual Gangster. I find this interesting because Spiritual Gangster used to be one of the Peloton apparel staples. They used to have clothes uh-huh. in the Peloton apparel all the time. And now you don't really see it since Peloton does their own now. So just interesting. Absolutely. Congrats to Kendall. Jermaine Johnson is going on vacation he is and i just thought it was funny because he talked about uh after the longest two years any of us have experienced i'm finally getting a proper vacation so if anybody didn't know he's going to be out so if you're going to miss out on some of his running classes or his new strength classes he'll be back they're on demand take them and he'll he'll be back he might already be back because it was five days ago (laughs) yeah like so when he's not on the schedule calm down that's right pop sugar featured uh some ab trainer led ab workouts for <laughs> mm-hmm. your abs mm-hmm. something like that yeah but one of them was emma lovewell's crush your core yeah and it was it was specific to crush your core too i have done crush your core i've not done crush your core too but man it is effective and it's only four weeks and it is totally accessible to anybody who can do floor exercises this is a great way to get consistency in your workouts if that's something you're struggling with because they're only five and ten minutes a day uh, i think there's the longest one is 20 so it's it's something that's bite size and you can fit in if you're tr- really trying to like i can't i can't fit it in you know right. this is a good way to do that 
Okay, so I know on the surface this looks like it has nothing to do with Peloton. Yes, it was Huffington Post has an article, How to Dress Like Rihanna at Fashion Week in Your Everyday Life. And I'm like, I don't think everyday people get to dress like Rihanna. Well, certainly not that. Yes. Um, she's she's dressed in basically a negligee on the red carpet yes. and pregnant I mean, how do you, it's not even fair that she looks that amazing <laughs> while pregnant. But at any rate, uh, the reason that we have this is because because Kendall was at Fashion Week and she was also in basically mesh. Uh, and uh, so she was featured in the article as well. And then they have some suggestions for how you too can dress in mesh in your everyday life. And I'm going to go ahead and pass. I'll yeah. leave that to the 20 year olds. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have a similar figure to Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. Joining us uh, once again via the magic of ZoomTube from MetPro, here to answer your fitness and nutrition questions, it's Angelo. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hey, guys. Great to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you, too. Uh, we we have a, another fun question for you. Uh, this one I can relate to. Andrea Fornwalt Van Pelt. Uh, she says, Fiber. How do we evaluate it and what should we consider in incorporating it in our daily meal plans? Also, how do we think about it in relation to our macros we are working towards? We got another two parter here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, fiber is actually in my book and in the MetPro workbook, we talk about fiber is actually listed in one of the many modalities that have been scientifically proven to impact weight, body composition, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to, I mean, we, we can approach this from many different angles. I'm going to talk from a, a metabolic angle versus a digestive health angle. Um, there's obvious benefits health-wise, nutrient, et cetera, from fiber. We're going to kind of put that aside and talk uh, a little bit about its role in weight loss, weight gain, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> when we look at what levers we have to manipulate somebody's body composition. We want to build muscle. We want to lose fat. We want to increase or decrease body weight. Um, the number one place just by a hair is I am going to look at total calories. Now, it, I really struggle saying total calories is more important than any of the other factors, but it is very influential just right under calories, we have to look at the macronutrient ratios. Because if you're eating a high carb diet versus a low carb diet, regardless of your calories, that is gonna massively impact the outcome and how your body responds to it. So we have calories, we have your macronutrient ratios, that's your ratios of protein, carbs, and fats. Then underneath that, we have the glycemic load of meals and their timing. And I tend to combine those two topics because they're very intertwined. The impact on your blood sugar is so connected to the timing of when you eat that I like to talk to them to, about them together, though they are two distinct topics. And then we talk about sugar's impact on the body, as you can guess, reducing sugar is good. And then fibrous foods. Why is fiber good for weight loss? Well, fiber is neutral. There's nothing about eating fiber that causes your metabolism to run faster, you to magically lose weight or anything like that. What fiber does is it fills your belly with an indigestible, talk about indigestible fibers, with it an indigestible bulk that moves through your stomach and then uh, into your small and large intestine without actually adding a hefty calorie load to your intake. So when somebody is trying to lose weight, it's one of the first tools we take off the shelf. If we can a little bit, don't take it to extreme, but a little bit, increase their fibrous foods, then likely they're going to eat a higher bulk diet that is going to be lower in total calories. So even though fibrous foods are going to be carbohydrates, they're probably still going to be lower in total carbs just by virtue of all totals coming down. And of course, it is good for the digestive system. It keeps you full. It's satiating. And so I really like to see my clients 
look for fibrous foods in the form of fruits and vegetables wherever possible. And then bonus benefits come from the main meal carbohydrates that you may choose. You can even get some fibers while you're getting fats. For example, avocados are one of my favorite fat choices that I'll sometimes suggest for my clients because it's a way to get them their fat requirements while getting some free fiber in there as well. Uh, so when you're trying to, from the framework of lose weight or reduce body fat, always look at the fiber content in foods because if you find a food that's higher in fiber, likely it's going to make you feel fuller for the amount of calories that you're getting and is going to be a great choice. It's like a bonus uh, feature. Correct. <laughs> Correct. I like it. And, and, and a little bit on just how the the digestive system works. Think of it as your, your intestines kind of massage matter to move through it. I'm sure that's what everyone wanted to hear about today. <laughs> matter, yes, we'll talk about fecal matter. When there's more intestinal bulk, it's easy, easier for your intestines to do its job and move matter through. And so that has the impact of keeping us regular. And we all know we're in a better mood when we're regular. So see, it has all these benefits. Facts. <laughs> well, I think we all know one thing about me. I'm not regular. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody on, has accused you of such, Tom. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> on any level, Tom. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all that. And if people would like uh, fitness nutrition like this or fitness guidance <laughs> like this tailored for them, uh, where can they find you? Metpro.co slash TCO. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Peloton Artist Collaborations. So we have two artist collaborations this week. Both make me feel old because I haven't heard of either of them. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, Helene Fischer is a German artist, okay? Okay. So it's understandable that we have not heard of her. So that's what I'm going to feel to make okay. myself feel better. That's what I I'm going to say. I will hang my hat on that. But the German instructors are really excited about this artist series. She awesome. is a huge deal in Germany. Uh, it starts this week and they are just thrilled to be doing this so it looks like high energy music it's probably something we'd like because it sounds fun yeah okay and then also we have carol g so now i think that we haven't heard of carol g because i think it's more of a they're adding spanish language classes ah. uh, to this artist series as we celebrate women's history month so that might be okay. why we have not heard of carol g there we it go also could just be for both that we're old it's possible. Yes. Anything's possible. They could both mm -hmm. be true. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Past guest update. We have a past guest update from Andrea Barber, one of our most popular interviews. Yeah, I just thought this was fun. She said, look who's in the New York Times crossword today. And it was Kimmy Gibbler. <laughs> How fun is that? That's really cool. <laughs> Well, congrats. Because yes. that's a big deal to make, to create a something that resonates in pop culture to that degree. Especially so. that many years later. Yeah, that's like getting a Jeopardy question or something, you know, like, yeah, well done. Yeah, absolutely. And she's just like the nicest person yeah. ever. Love her. And also, if you think about it, not only did she create a character like that, but she created a character like that when she was like, what, 13? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a really good point. Such a young age to have that gravitas. It's amazing. In case you missed it. We had a couple posts about uh, Women's History Month. Yeah, I love this picture because it is Aditi and Anna. They got to do a two for one yoga mm -hmm. celebrating white, uh, Women's History Month. And um, they, they showed a picture of them hugging. And you can see Anna's little adorable baby bump uh, with her heart on her yoga leggings. And she's just adorable. They're very cute together. And I love that they had fun. So it's just really cool. And then Christine D'Arcolet also had one. She did. Yeah, it was really nice. She she had 24 hours with her closest friends. And uh, she basically had just a post of just her great time with her closest friends. And I think it's gearing up for her wedding. So that's pretty exciting. Peloton Apparel is looking for your favorite instructor quotes yeah this is a few days ago they had uh it, did we miss any they wanted they said they're working on something special uh in the apparel store so that's interesting because we haven't had instructor quotes for two years now so yeah. it'll be interesting to see if those they, were very popular they were yeah they were 
And so uh, that would be I think that would be very popular if they brought that back and brought it back with with new quotes on them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, for the lucky few, there were Apple Watch uh, Peloton bands. Yeah, this was so funny. Uh, Stacy Carr mentioned that these were in the Peloton store. And uh, <laughs> OK, so I have to say that Dr. Jen, <laughs> you're going to call her out I, and I, tell the story. I, well, I'm not calling her out okay. so much as I'm calling myself out because she was like, <laughs> She was like, I'm buying them and I don't even have an Apple Watch. (laughs) So I guess I am calling her out a little. But also, she was, I was like, yeah, I don't know. She was like, well, what if they sell out and then I get an Apple Watch? (laughs) And I was like, that's a really good point. Gotta be prepared. So then I bought them that night and then the next day sold out. Next morning, they were gone. So then they refreshed them the next day, sold out within two hours. So I don't know if they ever came back. I didn't check again because I got mine. <laughs> but I thought that was super fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's funny. Very funny. And then finally, not necessarily Peloton related, but I guess Peloton adjacent. Just this is world, just a cool in the world of story. fitness, and it's Women's History Month. Heck yeah! Yeah, and so Jasmine Paris became the first woman in ten years to complete the quote unquote fun run (laughs) at the infamous Barkley Marathons in Tennessee. Yeah, she completed three loops of the five lap Sufferfest in the time of 39 hours, 49 minutes and 56 seconds. So I don't know if anybody out there listening is has no idea what I'm talking about. You need to Google Barkley Marathon if you haven't. It is the most insane ultra marathon ever created. But it is really cool that that this woman was able to do this like that is freaking goals right there. Yeah, I, I don't have, I don't have the ability to train <laughs> for something like that. Like I, my whole life would have to go on hold to do that. Right. I just, I don't even know. But it's, I am super impressed with this lady. It's like it's awesome. Congrats to her. Not that she'll ever hear this. <laughs> Peloton birthdays. And we have a birthday that I guess should have been in last week's episode, but we missed. So Marcel Dinkins. Yes, it is her birthday on March 17th. So make sure that you wish her a belated birthday because she will love that. And she was born on. She shares a birthday with Peloton. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So now we'll have two birthdays on the 17th. Checking in with the Peloton community. So uh, joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Nicole Ward. Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Hi, it's good. How are you guys? Good, good. Uh, I have to tease you a little bit. So it's it's January uh, and uh, you have your tree. Uh, oh, man, I was going to tell people it was March. <laughs> I, was, I, was gonna... I think I'm fully in the realm of it's acceptable to have your Christmas tree up and it is coming down this weekend. So well, this I, is like I had the, to. I have to tease yeah. you because it's going to probably be like eight weeks or so before this episode goes up. So it's going to seem. Yes. Really. That's why I was going to tell people it was March. <laughs> oh, shoot. And be like, we recorded this interview this morning. And she still, still got her tree, her tree up. up. <laughs> it would not be far fetched. There's probably been years where I'm pushing it. It's like, it's a Valentine's Day tree now. It's an Easter tree. But hey, yes. if it makes you happy, yeah. who cares? So I, I'm going to ask a slim, semi personal question. Are you Catholic? No. Oh, okay. Because like, if you're Catholic, you can always be like, "We have until the Epiphany." Like that's what <laughs> Catholic, that's like. I went to Catholic school, so like all my friends were Catholic, and like, that was that was every mother's answer. We have until the Epiphany. <laughs> no, nope, it just makes me happy, and you know we were bumping right up against like coming back to school and like getting oh. back into the swing of that, and so now I'm like. It'll happen. Yeah, it'll 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 certainly be there when you're ready to take it down. They yes. don't go anywhere. Yeah. They just wait. Well, <laughs> unless it's fake, a real so tree. Like, it's, the needles aren't going to fall off yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Wonderful. If you got a real tree, it's going to get ugly. Uh, yeah, you're that gonna, can that can be dicey. You won't have an Easter tree. You'll have an Easter stick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have a fake tree because of issues with real trees. So <laughs> no more. There, we have a fake tree for a reason. <laughs> well, we're very politically correct. We have both. Yes, we so, have one fake have and one fake real. And real. So <laughs> I just burn all the pine candles in December and I have my fake tree and it's a happy compromise. Yeah, yep. you're like, that's what Glade plugins are for. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so over to Peloton. So when did you originally find Peloton? 
So I tore my ACL skiing a okay. couple of years ago Okay, and was having just a really hard time coming back from my surgery and rehab. And I had kind of gotten into running half marathons and just kind of hit this point where I was like, I'm never going to run again, let alone a half marathon, not even a mile. And I was just really discouraged. And thankfully, one of my really close girlfriends, husband had also recently torn his ACL and had surgery and got a Peloton bike and was like, it's been great for him. You should do it. And basically like sight unseen went to, I say our local Peloton store, but it's two hours away for us <laughs> and uh, on Black Friday and bit the bullet and did it and uh, have, haven't looked back since. And now we're also Tread Plus owners. Um, yes, yes. And yeah, just really haven't looked back since I've gotten more into strength. I mean, I like to think I kind of utilize everything between the bike and the tread and meditations and strength classes and all that. But I think we were delivered December 10th, 2018. Oh, so you must have turned around and bought the tread right after that then. I bought it like as soon as I could. We moved in the fall of 2020 and we did not want to move it. Ah. And so once we were in our new house, this house, I was like, click. <laughs> so that came, I want to say November or December of 2020. Oh, wow. So, uh, Snuck so that under the pandemic wire. Well, I think I think yes. I think more importantly, under the recall wire. Yeah. <laughs> we did. And I half joked that like, you were going to have to pry it out of my house like if they didn't have to take it back there was no way i was giving it back you know our situation is different it's a room with a closed door if we need it to our kids are a little bit older our pets stay out of the room kind of stuff so any concerns for us you know we're very different than for other people of sure. course but um i absolutely love the tread plus and i'm I'm so happy we got it in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good timing yeah. on both. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so now you said that you tore your ACL skiing. So I take from that you've always been pretty active or no. Am I making too I mean, much I of an assumption? I was pretty active. It's skiing in Michigan. So I use that term lightly having <laughs> skied in Colorado before. And I'm sure some of these other mountain people, if they're listening, are like, they have mountains in Michigan. <laughs> not not technically, but um, you can get some runs in. So so it was just kind of a fluke accident on a very easy hill. And unfortunately, I tore it and there was no going back from that. Hey, at least you have real yeah. snow when you ski. Yeah, we have a we, we have, have a, a golf course. That, yeah, we have a place here that it, that has skiing. Yeah. And it's and like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fake snow. It's fake snow. Yeah, We and, have a lot of yeah. snow. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and it's like the hills like not. It's not, it's a golf course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not. It's not skiing. No, it's not yeah. skiing. But when you live in Missouri, that's, that's what you got. That's what you got. Yeah. So. Very true. Uh, so okay. So um, had you been like working out, like when you got the Peloton, the bike, and then the tread? Did you change your workout level? Did that change for you? Well, being injured was really a a humbling lesson oh, yeah. in going slowly, doing it right. Um, cross training. I'd never really put such an emphasis on cross training. And I finally hit the point where I really couldn't run every day, even as I was building my strength back up and my mileage back up, which is why the bike was so great to start off with, because I was able to build up so much cardio without that pain and pressure on my knee. Um, so by the time I did finally get back to running, my cardio was really at a solid baseline to build mileage at. You know, I think I had always like danced around fitness. I, you know, played sports in high school and kind of did whatever I thought would work in college to kind of stay active. Running was always something that I came back to, but I never understood the importance of cross training or weights or stretching. So many things like that, that I just was always able to kind of be like, it's fine. I'm doing what I can and this works for me. But being injured became a very humbling experience in form in rest, yeah. in all, all sorts of things that I had just never considered. So, well, so, so I feel like listening to you, I'm hearing you learned a lot from, from Peloton as well, not just going through your rehab that you had to go through, but whenever you started using Peloton, it sounds like you've learned a lot since then. 
Yeah. There are so many just kind of workout lessons and techniques and tips that you can gain from it. And then I always say like the right class finds you. So <laughs> kind of emotionally, like when you're going through things, what the instructors say and the message that they have and those great little quips and tidbits that they put out. I- I've had so many instances where it's been just what I needed. I'm I'm chuckling because Dr. Jen says that a lot whenever we talk <laughs> yeah. about things. She'll be like, it doesn't matter what class you take because it'll always be the right one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it finds you. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> so um, so do you do things like bar and, and that kind of stuff too? Because I know you said you do pretty much all the Peloton stuff, but some of them are a, a little, you know, they're, they're harder to kind of work in. They're yeah. more of a niche kind of Peloton product. How... How's that going? I tend to stay away from a lot of the body weight classes. I just, I'm not as comfortable with those. I tend to just really not connect with them as much. Yeah. Um, Kind of the same thing with Pilates and bar, but I will do it. I did a bar class today. Um, I know you've had Nicole Gonzalez on from Hardcore on the Floor. And I, you know, kind of go back and forth, but I love the structure of the Hardcore on the Floor calendar and being able to kind of pick and choose. So that was huge for me, being able to incorporate that and not having to think about what I'm doing and picking the classes and all of that. So that was a huge help. So I tr- I try not to be resistant to anything, <laughs> but I certainly have favorites. <laughs> it's okay to not like everything. It is. Like it's it okay. is. Yeah. There's so much to yeah. choose from. That's you know, why even there's so much stuff. Class style. Yeah. I mean, you, sometimes you got to try it three, four, five times before you can fully assess it either is or isn't for me. And even sometimes it's nice to throw those in to shake it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it has to match the day you're having. So if you're having yeah. an off day and you're like I have to push through and work out you really can't judge how you meshed with that class on that day you just can't (laughs) so so tell us about the comeback bike nomination that you did sure um so one of my oldest and dearest friends is in education. She's been a teacher and she's now an assistant principal or principal. And, you know, she just has this heart for loving kids and and guiding them. Um, And then on top of that, she, well, now she's not a new mom, but, you know, she's got a young kid and we all know how draining that can be. Um, And her husband is an entrepreneur. So especially starting off, those hours are unpredictable and long. And I just kind of saw this shift in her of giving so much and not having anything left for her. And I know how much I got out of Peloton. And, you know, you can say you're finding yourself or you can say you're getting your groove back or you can say you're taking your me time, whatever you want to call it, the benefit is there. And I just really thought that she needed that benefit too. And kind of on a whim one night, I didn't even tell her. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just kind of fingers on the keyboard were flying. And I just was like, if, if it doesn't work out, she'll never know. And it's not a big deal. And if it does, then awesome. And, um, kind of forgot about it. Like then we moved. I really, and truly like I did it on such a whim and, you know, I didn't really have a record of it. Um, right. You I just send it. Remember if they sent you like a copy of like, here's what you submitted. And then I just, we had the pandemic happen and I had some personal things happen. And I just like hadn't thought about it. And all of a sudden I got this email like, your nomination has been accepted. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> that felt like so long ago. So then I got to call her and tell her the great news. I was like, check your email, check your email. That is so cool. That's cool. I was wondering how they did that. So like you you get, they, they let you call and tell her? Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody from them from Peloton called her. I'm assuming she got an email. I don't know. It was all such a blur. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was like, girl, I nominated you for this and you got it. And she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, you're getting a Peloton. (laughs) Do you feel like Oprah? That's what I was thinking. You get a Peloton (laughs) and well, just you. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, because my sister was like, why didn't you nominate me? And another sister's like, why didn't you nominate me? I'm like, well, you, uh, no, here's no, what you, you should have said. You, you said, did. You said, I did, but you're not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I have I'll a sister. Not that's to the, listen to this podcast. Be yeah. like, no, never mind. Don't listen to right. it. Guys. I have a sister. That's the best part of it. Is just is. 
teasing her mercilessly. Oh, and you do. Yeah. And I do. You do. I, she, yeah, oh, she, I know what I supposed to the other day. You guys day. don't even want to hear our stories. So my, sister, my sister the other day posted, she's moving, and so she's been collecting and fi- going through boxes and she's like oh my god she's like i was going through boxes and i found all these coins like i mean she had like four gallon ziploc bags oh. of coins and she's like so like i'm gonna solve the coin shortage with all the you know i'm gonna turn them in and so i take because she's older than i am i always tease her about being older than me and i was like oh that's weird i thought you went through the change years ago <laughs> Can you believe him? I can. I mean, having listened first, yeah. you know, right, you're like, yes, yeah, yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so, so she. So your sisters aren't good enough. That's where we were at. Yeah, that's Just where we were at. Yeah, yeah. Sisters yeah. aren't good enough. Yeah. Well, I've been trying to bring them into the Peloton family. I have a sister that uses the app, and then I have a sister that has the Tread Plus as well. Very nice. Um, so we tend to do workouts together. We try for Saturday sixties um, when we can. So yeah, and yeah. then my friend that I nominated. Her sister also got a Peloton bike just on her own accord. Um, so yeah, we're we are bringing everybody into the family. <laughs> trust me. Well, and 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 if I remember correctly from the story, it goes a step further than that because the friend that you nominated and got the bike then nominated somebody else, right? That's correct. So tell so us she, how that all went down. Yeah. So I don't. Again, I don't think she told me that she was nominating anybody else, but she had a dear friend who she described as just kind of like the life of the party and, and outgoing and, and there for everyone lost her mother and, and just was struggling with it. Like just became a different person um, and was vocal about her grief and how she was struggling, which I think is so, you know, raw and honest and helps anybody else going through that. You know, that's another great way to help people is just to be honest and sharing what you're going through and what's difficult. So my friend saw this change in her again and um, was just thinking that this might be something that helps her connect to a community, helps her take that time back for herself, helps her, of course, physically and mentally, you know, with those endorphins and everything um, and nominated her friend. And she also won. So she now has a Peloton bike and rides with us. And yeah. That's the Peloton gift that just keeps giving. Yeah, literally. It is. It's such a trickle down, you know, effect for so many people. Like not just you using it and how you're able to be better, you know, in what you do and and your daily life and but just in how you can share it with people. And yeah, it's great. I was going to ask if your friend was was using the, the bike a lot, but I guess she must be if she's participating in the comeback program to pay it forward to other people she must have been really yeah bought in <laughs> I, she i think she, it's the same thing like she sees the value of it you know we we love being able to connect we we connect enough as it is we're we're talking to each other and we're texting each other and we're texting our sisters and all of that but yeah just being able to share it in a different way with somebody else i think is is just awesome and see them hit their stride with it or see them you know discover different ways of using it is it's great that's cool so did you um ever get to go to the peloton studio before before things shut down before the world no no No. sad oh i'm sorry i I know i know it is so weird i mean i hardly go back to really old classes anymore because there is so much content but wow like it feels weird. I, I'm not even in that room and it feels weird seeing it packed with people all sweating and riding together yeah. and running and you can it feels feel like a lifetime ago. It does. You can feel the energy coming from it in a different way. I know a lot of people that have never experienced that like they joined peloton during the pandemic there's so many people that are like i don't ever want to i don't want to see people in that studio let's not go back to that (laughs) and uh i hope that that's not the case because well number one they built that ginormous studio so i would like to see them get some use out of that but but also um I just think that it's such a different energy, you know, it's it really brings the energy in a way that I just think people who've never experienced it can't even imagine how it, it ramps up. I wonder if maybe yeah. they'll do both, like they'll I don't have know. some with and some without, or maybe they could even shoot the classes in a way to where it's like, how do you want it? Do you want it with people or without people? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that would be interesting. 
That'd be very interesting. Yeah. But they kind of talk see- to the people in class, so I don't know if they could shoot it. Mm, that's true. I mean, traditionally, that's what right. they've done. Yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say? Just, I just, I want that picture post-class with the sweat pouring off me still, you know, with the instructors. That's what I want. <laughs> I just want that. I want to meet the instructors and see the instructors. And I wonder if we'll ever get to do that again. Like, even if we go back to being in studio, it's just the, the, the community has grown so much. I just don't know if we're going to have that same... They're such celebrities now. Yeah. I mean, they were yeah. trending that way, but like, but like, there's been such a gap in time that by the time they fire it back up, they're they're way more popular than than they were previously. And yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know how you do that. Yeah, like I don't I, since you didn't get to go to the studio, I don't know if you if you know this because a lot of people don't if you hadn't been. But a long time ago, there were like it was just you get you just went up and like took a picture with the instructor, and yeah. and I mean right. at the edge of the stage, you just took a picture yeah. with them. Yeah. But then as time wore on, they started having bodyguards up there, and so like then they would be like no pictures, and you could only do the pictures after class, which I totally mm-hmm. get. They needed to keep the instructor safe, but like what level of safeguards are right. going to be needed two years, you know, two years yeah. later? I can't even imagine what that's going to look like. I know you have people like hanging out in front of Peloton Studios, like hoping they catch an instructor going in or coming out kind of thing. Yeah. Th- yeah. That would be me, but <laughs> yeah. absolutely. If I live there, I'm sure I would find reasons to go by all the time, yeah. you know, but if you, if you lived there, the thing is, is you got to, you got to kind of know the instructors before they got really popular. And, mm-hmm. and now it's like, yeah, they kind of stand outside and there's, there's hardly anyone in there and they know when the schedule is because they know when it's the instructors posted, are yeah. teaching. So <laughs> yeah, it's a little creepy. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely a stalker element to some of these things with either like trying to catch them in New York and, you know, like seeing what they're doing on Instagram and, you know, leading up to if you're trying for a shout out and things like that. I mean, and that I, I've even seen such a change in the shout outs. Oh, for sure. People are hitting these milestones for rides and runs because they're just cranking out classes so yeah, there's no more like 50 and 100 shout outs anymore. They're like, you hit a thousand classes. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm like, so. maybe the people that hit a thousand shouldn't get the shout outs because they've been around long enough to where they've probably gotten plenty. But that's actually not <laughs> true anymore. Because, I guess so, yeah. Because people take so many like 20 minute classes right. or five minute classes and they stack them. And, and and what ends up happening is that that because because it's so busy, they may have gone all the way to a thousand rides with never having a shout out. Like that's, right. that's yeah. possible. It's it's kind of crazy because there's so many people now and and there's yeah. people that don't care. You know, I'm I usually let the instructor know that I'm like, I mean, not that that matters, you know, that the, but yeah. I'm like, I'm going to take your class today and I'm going yep. to be getting a milestone. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we try. Yeah, I'll still try. Exactly. But, and I do try for some of the bigger ones. I, I will try, you know, to time a live ride and try to get some friends and stuff like that because yeah. it is a celebration. It is. But I, yeah, lately I've been like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Now it's like winning a con- a radio contest when you it were is. a kid. It's like, I <laughs> yeah. was caller 12. Yeah, it is. It's funny. I feel like I have much better luck on the treadmill getting shout outs than I do on the bike. So, yeah, and that makes yeah. sense. There's just not as many of them yet. There's so, not. I There's mean, that not. makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. So do you have a uh, preferred instructor? Hmm. I mean, I love Jess Sims because my sister and I tend to do her workouts together. And I think she's just funny and motivational and like hard. Like if I want to kick my butt, I'm taking a Jess Sims boot camp class. I'm trying to think. Bike, I mix it up a ton. Co- like I always say Cody's my boo, but I, I started really loving Allie Love when I first hit Peloton. Like I was like, oh, Allie Love everything. Robin's great, especially like coming into motherhood now. I feel like that's a different connection any of us moms have with her now. I don't know. I mean, what did your cool uh, down say? I haven't checked it yet. <gasps> what? So listen, I know. Listen, so I was on a mission to hit 10,000 minutes. New Year's Eve, I ended up having like 79 minutes I had to do something. <laughs> I did it to myself. So I was like, you are not allowed to check your cool down until you hit your 10,000 minutes. And it was like 6.30 on New Year's Eve. <laughs> and then I just like forgot and have moved on. Oh and my I gosh. haven't gone back and checked it. Oh I my gosh. Bad Peloton person. I 
I don't even know that we can continue this interview. Right <laughs> right. Don't kick me off. It's fine. I totally understand. Yeah, we're not even going to let you tell people where to find you. If that's... <laughs> You don't get your leaderboard no, name. You don't get to none share of it. anything. We're done. <laughs> yes. I know. I've really failed everyone. And yeah. it was hard because everyone was doing them and posting them. And I was like, nope, you are not allowed to look at yours. <laughs> and now here we are, January 7th. And now here and we I are in March. <laughs> and <laughs> you still have, still have your tree up and you, you haven't your checked your, your you cool down. No. Right. And Nicole. Easter is just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'll tell you guys by next year i'll be like well my 2021 i'll update you guys <laughs> okay okay fair enough that's good <laughs> we'll let you slide this time actually i can probably tell you what it was i had a i had a season of meditations so it's probably gonna say it was like a dt yeah. was your number one instructor because i had a season of meditations oh, that's, so. that's good that means you probably needed it <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of an unfair question of us these days when we ask your, you know, your favorite instructor or preferred instructor, because it's like nobody ever really thinks to to even consider the yoga instructors. I don't think like even if they do it, they don't think of it as like that's an, you know, they think of like exercise i guess yoga is exercise yeah, and yeah but it's exercise, different but yeah. it's yeah because people think peloton they think bike first right. that's always that's always where yeah. everybody's head goes and then tread yeah. next and then the other i mean assuming they have a tread if they don't have a tread then it could be it could be strength next yeah. but it's it's right. usually not yoga is next right which is a real shame yeah. for me too because i i really enjoy yoga it's just it doesn't burn enough calories i just it just doesn't it just it doesn't. depends like some people like i was on a blue dot kind of mission my husband was on a close his apple rings mission my sister was on a the apple monthly challenges mission like we all have our things that we're going for so exactly. it really just depends um and yes if you're trying to hit calories meditation and yoga tend to not be the ones that you're gravitating towards but we own an apple orchard and so my fall is very busy and very physical and really and truly, I don't have gas left in the tank for a workout in addition to some of that I stuff. I bet not. And so my blue dot is a meditation at night. I have like a response to a DT's voice on some of those. And I'm telling you, it just knocks me right out. That's wonderful. <laughs> that is wonderful. And I and I do love the yogas. Like uh, I recently took the uh, the Taylor Swift one with Anna Greenberg yeah. and I really enjoyed that. I um, liked it too. There's a lot of a lot of really good classes. So, so a, a DD is your favorite meditation slash yoga yeah okay and i love any of the hip um the like 10 minute oh for sure classes for hips like between running biking being a woman all of that the hip mobility and like just the tightness in them those classes are fantastic they are yeah i bookmarked one the other day it was a it was it wasn't a yoga it was it was a hip stretch that i mm-hmm. did and i bookmarked it after a bike class because nan it it really like got in there deep lots of good stretching so i was like oh yes. that's what i needed <laughs> and that's why i tell people like don't overlook those five and ten minute stretching classes that you can just add on or like do it in the middle of the day any of that like there's benefits and there's a time for them. That's right. Yep. So do you have any advice for people who are just now entering the world of Peloton? She just gave it. Oh, sorry. I'm just kidding. No, I'm teasing you. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I didn't hear it that way at all, but okay. I've done it before. How much more time do we have? Yeah. I think, you know, you've got to try everything. You've got to try instructors. You can't listen to what other people say, but also like listen to what people say, uh, you know, because it's like some people yeah, may like, not that's like That's weird advice. Do you have any advice? Don't listen to my advice. <laughs> <laughs> but then if I don't listen, I did listen. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> I know. I think, you know, everybody just has to find their own way. Yes. Um, that they use it you know i'm not saying don't go out and run your your miles outside just because you want to run on a treadmill now find the best way for you to incorporate it into your life but the investment that you make into yourself and into your health has benefits that you cannot put a dollar amount on you can't put you know um a, a time amount on it's just it's so crucial that we keep ourselves healthy that we keep ourselves mentally you know prepared with everything going on and and just that we take that time so just put the time in find what works for you and take it from there 
however works for you. Excellent advice. Absolutely. So uh, what is your leaderboard name? So my name is Knickknack Cider Whack. Um, <laughs> we use our apples to make hard cider. So I'm a hard ma- hard cider maker by trade. Oh, that's um, fun. And I just thought it was funny and silly. And <laughs> it is. No, that, I'm, I bet I would think that would get lots of shout outs because it's fun to say. I, you would think. You would think. <laughs> She's like, but like you would what be more do they want from me? I'm I trying know. here. It's uh, it's very creative. It's fun to say. I I don't understand. Yeah, yeah you you would I think. I think I've got two shout outs ever. Yeah. Wow. Man, they yeah. are getting stingy with yeah. them. <laughs> I know, and they were a long. I think they were at like fifty, like ten and fifty rides, maybe. Like they oh. were a long time ago. Oh goodness. Wow. wow. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a birthday shout out. It's like one maybe like one milestone and one birthday. And that's if, been it. Maybe they are like they they think it's dirty and they can't figure out why, so they just <laughs> don't say it. They're like Cider, what? No. Um, um, you're better safe than sorry. Jimbo 319. I, say, I know. Job. I have to say, I can't decide yet. I, well, actually, I think I know. Like a like an Instagram like or comment from an instructor versus like a shout out. And I have to say, I think I like the Instagram stuff a little bit more. Well, and my one sister and I will always like screenshot and send it to each other. Be like... <laughs> Did you see this? Like we're basically famous now. Like you know, <laughs> like we really love any of those little interactions online with the instructors too. And I do have to say, like Adrian Williams will always have a special place in my heart because my sister used Peloton all during her breast cancer journey, Aww. and he was just so great. I would send him like little messages, like she's really struggling or she's, she's so excited about this or like, she loved doing this. And he, he was so responsive with everything. And he sent her the sweetest message one time. And I was like, all right, Maurice, you got got us. (laughs) That's awesome. awesome. That is really cool. (laughs) But I agree. I was, I know how excited I was when Mickey Dolan started following me on Twitter. Yeah, I was very that was, excited. Okay. That was a big day. Yeah, it was a big day. Yeah, we all have our thing. We, we do. do. We do. She's <laughs> like, I don't know what that means, but I understand that it means something to you. It's a monkey's reference. It's one of the monkeys. It's a monkey. I'm, I'm happy for you. <laughs> 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 that was the equi- that was the verbal equivalent of pat pat, pat. yes yes it was <laughs> well i have a preteen so i'm really used to that kind of response like well if it makes you happy or yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you like how that looks yeah. <laughs> oh my god don't you start to feel old yeah. whenever you see the stuff they're wearing it's like What's wrong with kids today? And this, rah, 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 rah. I should have saved my stuff from like freshman year of high school, and she could have just worn it all and saved me all this money. <laughs> right down to the Doc Martin combat boots. Amen, sister. Yeah. And we just bought two Plain pairs of those. I tied around my waist and the Doc Martin boots. I'm like, I could have just kept it for you. Yep. yep. Who knew those Doc Martins would have come in handy? You're like, hey, you want a Kate Bush CD? I can hug you up. <laughs> and, then, and then the response would be, CD. What's that? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think for that crystal. Sorry. Yeah, it's only going to get worse as yes. Tom tells me all the time. I do. I tell her all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Also, it's not going to get better. Yeah, he's yeah. a real ray of sunshine, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. But we have our health and That's we right. have our wellness <laughs> and we're not going to take it for granted and it helps us age gracefully. And we have wisdom. I mean, and we have Botox. <laughs> Which I guess is better than wisdom. <laughs> Depends on the day. You, just, you use all the tools together. That's Crystal. right. You're right. Okay. You're right. My bad. My bad. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, Christmas Eve to join us. <laughs> and before, it's Easter. <laughs> Easter Eve. And, yes. uh, and before we go, uh, remind everybody where they can find you if you would like to be found. Sure. So I'm on the bike and tread and meditations and strength classes as knickknack cider whack. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Really great. Thank you. 
So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group, and of course, don't forget our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash The Clip Out. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling and running. Clip in.